June 6th, 1966. A senator's wife had a child. Six years later, everyone around the boy started to die mysteriously. A detective was called to investigate the incidents. Slowly but surely, the curious case started to consume him. The deaths were surrounded with the paranormal and entangled with the supernatural. All the man could come up with was Senator Charles Wagner as the prime suspect, and only after witnessing him shooting his wife with a nail gun. In the end, only thing he pulled out from that burning Dante Manor was the child. My name is Detective McGuffin, and I was the guy sent to investigate them. The boy's name is Lucius. The whole house burned down to the ground, and we couldn't save them all. I managed to get the boy out, and at that time I was convinced it was his father Charles who was behind the murders. In these situations, the procedure was to take the boy to psychiatric evaluation, so I headed to St. Benedict's Hospital, the very same hospital he was born in. It was only fitting to visit it once more. He was sitting quietly in the back seat, staring at me through the mirror. When we arrived just before the nurses came to get him, he leaned forward and whispered something into my ear. The hair on the back of my neck stood up as I was overwhelmed with emotion. The whispers kept running through my head that this was no ordinary kid at all. As I returned to my apartment, I started to put the pieces together. They were all pointing at the boy. How could I not see this before? Was Charles right all along? Was I actually helping the devil's son? Yes, you finally understand your place in all this. You're him, aren't you? Come now. You have been able to sense it all along. Deep inside you, there's been something telling you to do the right thing. But I'm... Um, I'm Catholic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so am I. We are all just part of his plans. My job is to make things slightly more interesting. And me? I'm also just a part of the plans. You have done what you are supposed to do, and you are going to do a lot more. We are only getting started here. And look at it this way. You are just serving the Lord in the end. He is the one who actually devised the upcoming rapture. I'm just putting my little twist on the whole thing. We are all just fulfilling his wishes here. So, just relax and listen to what I have come up with for the boy now. <laughs> I was conflicted, but eventually I had to give in. All along I've been a servant to the cause. I was meant to travel this world as a servant of Lucifer and to protect his son. Lucifer had a plan that would bring everything together, and it was my job to see after Lucius. He'll have to look for the ashes to this little game that's been created for him. The Dark Lord has taken his powers away and leveled the playing field. It will not be an easy task for the boy, but it's all necessary sacrifice that will, in the end, pan out the way it was supposed to. They evaluated the boy and committed him. He had lost his abilities to influence anyone. Thoughts of abandonment were filling his head, and his thirst for blood was gone along with the rewards he'd already been given. It took six months until the boy was woken again. No blood was spilled. Someone up there was happy. It finally happened when they brought two new patients in. They were both rambling about a prophecy, and to make things more interesting, the other one was a woman of the cloth. Immediately, Lucius realized that there was more that he had to do, so in the blink of an eye, he attacked the man. There was a fire inside him again. He was not forsaken. He felt useful again. However, the employees managed to put him down. He was drugged, dragged to shock therapy. 
The boy had gathered a following throughout the hospital. Some of the patients naturally looked after the boy, but not these employees. They shackled him, imprisoned the prince. They laid him down on the bed ready to be shocked. But what they did not know, and what they could not guess, is the answer to a question. What happens when you shock the devil's son? First thing he did after breaking out was to open up all the other wings of the mental ward. This would allow Lucius to freely roam around, wreaking havoc. And she told me that I was the problem. Women. Can't live with them. Can't kill them. <laughs> hey, hey. Why is the space between a woman's breasts and her hips called a waist? Um... Because you could easily fit another pair of Jesus Christ. <laughs> A good one, Sam. Hmm. Seems like a double kill.
The end is not coming. It's already here, kid. <laughs> Strange man kept repeating. The Ludlow, end is not Devil coming. Ludlow, it's already Devil here, Boy. boy. <laughs> yeah. Strange man kept repeating, Ludlow, Devil Boy, Ludlow, Devil Boy. She was not there. It seemed she was on the fourth floor, probably from the check out that she was at Forgive me, for I have chosen wrong. What did it mean? Chosen the wrong god? Or the wrong son? Lucius had to visit each floor, one by one. The answers were there. But for now, he only had questions. Why did one of his followers decide to kill himself? without the boy's blessing. Why was everyone talking about this small town called Ludlow? What happened there? Had the prophecy begun without him? The fourth floor had a library on it, newspapers describing better the events in Ludlow. The boy also had more followers on this floor and would soon be calling on them for answers. So, how are we feeling today, Mr. Smith? Uh, I could be better. If I've learned something from this... <coughs> Never sent a human to do a machine's job. Luck was not on your side that time, was it? What? Oh! My arm! A 
Another follower had killed himself on the fourth floor. At that point, it became obvious that they were no longer following Lucius. However, in the follower's room, he did find a torn out newspaper called Danvers Post, with an article that described a new murder spree in a town called Ludlow. It seemed that two people were brought to this hospital. There was another man on the third floor, and maybe he had some more information. Uh, you here to meet Sister Marie? Move along. Uh, sorry, kid. I'm not allowed to let hey anyone there. into her room. Where's your mommy and daddy? Anyway, I don't think she's too fond of children. After what happened with some kid upstairs, huh? Okay? Run along there, little boy. His room was filled with candles. It was obvious that some sort of ritual had happened there. A no sign of the actual follower. But on the floor, Lucius found a map of the nearby area with the town of Ludlow circled. Hey, mister! In the library, Lucius found a newspaper that had part of an article torn out. The article was titled, New Murder Spree in Danvers. And on the same page, he saw another interesting article, explaining that Charles Wagner was in critical condition in this hospital. While strange whispers from Ludlow kept surfacing around the hallways, Lucius found out that his biological father, Charles Wagner, somehow survived the burning Dante Manor and was brought to this very hospital. That might be the reason behind losing his dark powers. But luckily, the blood was flowing again, bringing him closer to his father. Yes, the Dark Lord works in mysterious ways. The man had to die before waking up and endangering the cause.
boy picked up some keys from the receptionist. A lot of doors on this floor were locked, so the keys would come in handy. Hello there, young man. From the other lab, Lucius found his father's blood work. They had the room number on him, and it was on the second floor. Hello, handsome. Need help finding your parents? Lucius found a man from Ludlow called Peter Gilmore. He described some of the prophecies being fulfilled in Ludlow after a massacre that happened on a nearby farm. The killer was his nephew. <laughs> You can't be too picky these days. There are all sorts of crazy out there. Just when you got through with the Winter Hill murders and the same thing happens in Ludlow. The world just ain't what it used to be. There was a familiar name, Isaac Gilmore, on one of the blood works. Uh, papers described a strange reaction with his blood, but the information was incomplete. Possibly, the medical records could have more on this. Later, he would go on to find these records on the first floor. From the third floor, he managed to gather a lot more information about the events in Ludlow. But more importantly, he found out that Charles Wagner, his surrogate father, was a patient there. While looking for him, the boy found a nursery. Their minds would be just right for taking. Someone in Ludlow was gathering an army, and Lucius needed to prepare. From the weak minds, he would gain followers. The stronger ones he would sacrifice for more dark powers. Ludlow was burning, and whispers in the hospital kept repeating the same name, Isaac Gilmore. Lucius finally realized that he was, in fact, not the only son of the devil, and that he would have to work 
for the attention of his father. receptionists and picking up keys. This one had some important information on him too. This floor had a nursery that Lucius was surely inclined to visit. I guess it was alright to take a small detour to visit some younglings. They would be just right for turning into followers. Jesus Christ! While wandering the hospital, having to find young lads not influenced by any outside factors, it was time to change that.
double kill. Oops, my bad. It be kill. At this point, he called me. There were no words, but somehow I knew that I would have to wait for him at the morgue. It was strange how each moment I felt more connected to this kid. were gone. And in the end, Lucius would inherit all the wealth the family had gathered. No more people who knew the boy's true nature. The strength of the underworld was returning to the sun, and he was starting to feel like he could be on top of the world soon. Charles finally gone. Powers gained and followers turned. I was waiting for him at the morgue exit, but a few more souls remained in the hospital that would surely give some extra credit for the kid. The hospital administrator had to be stripped down to his last breath to face the judgment of the underworld. Isaac Gilmore was born in this hospital and the hospital kept his medical records. While looking for the morgue, Lucius found out that these actually contained some very useful information. It was the last stop before leaving the hospital behind. See, we've got a visitor here. Here to see your grandmother, are you?
Lucius found the medical records of the boy that was doing havoc in Ludlow. They described a very rare salt allergy that made his blood boil when he was even in contact with salt. Lucius was also diagnosed with salt allergy early on, but the effects were not nearly this severe. I see we've got a visitor here. Here to see your grandmother, are you? This day, it was the administrator who had to take the fall. He would burn in hell with all the other souls that were taken that night. This was where we would end up meeting. I could see it in his eyes. He was worried. It seems that he wasn't the only one trying to earn a place on his father's throne. There was another, and he was already a step ahead. The connection had been severed. No more nightly visits from Lucifer. No more holding hands and telling him what to do. It was a competition and there could only be one. The one who was able to fulfill the prophecies would gain the powers needed to sit on the lap of the one true evil. If unable, all others would perish with all the rest of the mortals while the apocalypse would sit upon the living world. This was all preparation for the final conflict between heaven and earth. The final conflict that would revitalize humanity and create a new beginning. Whose beginning? It remains to be seen.
I think that's enough for today, Andrew. Hey, give the man a drink. He needs one. That's all right. I'll just go buy some rope so I can hang myself. You asked that Gilmore kid to do a favor? You think it was the kid who did it? Um, what's his name? Isaac or something? It's the same thing that happened in Winter Hill. Kid got messed up and raped the whole house. It's the devil that's coming. It's the trump. It's the trumpets that's blowing. Yeah, yeah, Andy. We, we've heard this all before. End of the world is coming, blah, blah, blah. Mark my words. <laughs> Mark my words. Isaac was here already. The fire had been started and blood was spilled on the fields. It was then, when the town's emergency horn started its ear-shattering sound. This was clearly making the first horn and it was not Lucius who had fulfilled this. Soon the locals would be here, putting the fires out. Morning, sir. Uh, morning. Morning, miss. I'd like to make a withdrawal. Okay, sir. I just need to see your ID, and then all we need is the amount you were thinking about drawing today. Mm-hmm. Here you go. And I'd like to have $800, please. Oh, I don't seem to have enough here, sir. Just a moment while I visit our vault. Yeah, sure. Take your time, honey. Do what you need to do. I picked up the Bible and looked into these prophecies with more detail. It was time for the seven trumpets. Upon the first trumpet sound, hail and fire, mixed with blood, is thrown to the earth, burning up a third of the trees on the planet and all the green grass. Hello, Brayden. How are you? Hey, Donna. I'm great. How are you? How's your brother? Well, you know, he is very busy at the hospital. I don't get to see him that much. Well, at least he can spend some quality time with his wife there. I'm not so sure about the quality with all the incidents and all. Oh uh, yeah, first the Winter Hill Massacre and now the Gilmore House. I definitely chose the right profession. I could not take a minute of that. You too must be careful when delivering all that mail. They say that bad things are coming this way. Who says that? They. They talk a lot, don't they? They certainly do. From the map, he could work out the nearby area of the town. It seemed that the whole state's water treatment plant is located here. The end this is coming. certainly not a the coincidence. And... There are no coincidences tonight. Everything that happens from now on happens for a reason.
along, huh? Move. So what I'm seeing here. It seems that everyone was a bit wary around the town. It's clear that the Gilmore murders are affecting them. And even though Lucius was a bit worried of this boy being his brother in evil, he still got an odd satisfaction in the atmosphere. It feeds them both. Bonfire on the field and the burning cross meant that Gilmore was already working towards the seven trumpets. The boy was falling behind, so I decided to help him by stealing a truck filled with pesticides. It would take the boy straight to the third trumpet, leaving Isaac fulfilling the second. It would be through the nearby water plant, where Wormwood would poison a third of the water sources and men would die drinking it. That would even the score between Lucius and Isaac, putting them both on the same level. It would be a race to the finish between the two grim brothers. Whoever stood alone at the end would alone be worthy to sit on the dark throne. smoke? You're right. I wonder if something's burning. If that's the case, I hope it doesn't have anything to do with the Gilmore events. Yeah, the world's so fucked up these days. I can't even imagine what goes inside the heads of people who do things like that. Well, they're just born that way, I think. Rotten apples, amongst others. I guess so. said. By the second trumpet sounding, it cues something like a great burning mountain that plunges into the sea and wipes out a third of all sea life and ships. A third of the oceans will become blood. And this was Isaac's doing. We would have to work fast if we wanted to gain the same prestige he was currently gaining. Thank you. 
purifier was the first place where the water gets checked. It had now been disabled, and all the impurities were able to pass through. Water had to flow through this backup purification station, and it had been disabled now.
This was the final water filter that took the last of the impurities from the water. Ludlow was close to the largest lake in the area, and it was here where all the state's water was filtered. By the sound of the third trumpet, a great star called Wormwood, or in this case, the Wormwood Truck, falls to the earth, poisoning a third of the state's fresh water sources. Men will die from drinking its bitter taste. Lucius had poisoned the water supply. A horn started to sound as the mark of the beast, and this cleansing had begun. The boy was still gaining more powers, and that confirmed the path he had taken towards evil. He was sure he was going to meet Isaac Gilmore soon enough. Isaac was able to bring forth a meteor that plunged into the sea, and Lucius was able to poison the water supplies. Together, their havoc was devastating the earth. By shutting down the town's power plant, Lucius would bring complete darkness to Ludlow and gain more momentum. I just heard there was some sort of incident at the hospital. Really? W which hospital? St. Benedict's? Yeah, I heard someone had like a massive killing spree out there. What? Who? But, wh wh why? Oh. No one knows yet. Most of the incapacitated patients were murdered in their sleep. And a bunch of kids were found dead too. Wow. Oh, fuck me, man. No. Oh. When the fox hears the rabbit scream, he comes a-running. But not to help. Tell me about it. Breaking the power transformers did shut down the lights from the town. Only the fires in the village were visible.
Out of my way, kid. Energy batteries would take the darkness away that we are so keen for. Disabling it will secure safe passage for the Underworld's travelers. was also a nice bonus for the boy. It was surely giving him some extra strength to carry on with. For an eight-year-old, Certainly, some extra knowledge from the darkness that he serves. By breaking the fuses, he made sure that the darkness will not lift from Ludlow. The fourth horn echoed from the mountains as the animals all hailed the coming of the new age. One third of the light shining from the sun, the moon, and the stars became dark. A lunar eclipse graced the sky fittingly as the Lord was returning to walk the earth. A nearby research facility kept the locust farm, fitting our plans for the fifth horn. The Book of Revelations predicted a fiery chasm with a great cloud of smoke rising out. The sun and the air would turn black, and a swarm of locusts would emerge from the smoke. All this would burn, and the insects would roam the fields. Jesus Christ. The whole place is on fire. What the hell are we gonna do? I think it was a kid that was doing it. That weird kid. Gilmore. There was something not right there. I I'm not sure what I saw, but something wasn't right. Why? Well, what do you mean, Joe? Well, this might sound odd, but I think... I think the kid was in the fire the whole time.
medical records help Lucius to find the weakness against this other force he had to face. gonna be okay. No, no. I've been thinking about the recent events, and guess what? Guess what? It seems like the person, <laughs> or the thing behind all this, behind everything, is trying to reproduce the apocalyptic events of the seven trumpets described in the Bible. Uh-huh, yeah. That's nuts. Just listen to yourself how crazy that sounds. What? Maybe you're right. Oh, man. Maybe I'm starting to lose my mind. Or maybe, or maybe, or just maybe, I'm actually right this time. What then, huh? What do you say then, huh? What do you think? What the fuck? Jesus. Isaac Gilmore was busy having fun torturing people. Sometimes you gotta remember the main objective and resist the urges you might have for pure sadistic fun. So, I'll show you the pain. I'll take everything away from you and... How you will show your colors! So that those who survive this reign of hell on Earth will be worthy of God's love. Rest of you will join us beneath the bedrock of justice. The prophecy is almost fulfilled. <laughs> I will take the thousand years and bring you rapture like you have never seen before. You know nothing about true pain. I will show you true horror. This will sound the trumpets when you fight to warn your friends and torment your loved ones. The destruction of them. There will be a smoke that darkens the air and blocks the sunlight. 
Demon using salt against another demon. Never thought I'd see that. Isaac disappeared into the flames as the fifth horn sounded. The sound of the locust blended with the police siren and the town's emergency horn. <laughs> After opening it, the smoke that rose out darkened the ah! and blocked out the sound. It was done. The competition was over. As Lucius returned to the main road of Ludlow, he was able to see what havoc he'd created on this small forsaken town. The National Guard had arrived and roadblocks were put in place as a security measure. It was total martial law. We waited for the sixth and seventh trumpets to call out. The death of four angels marked the return of the last angel, and he would give the scroll to the one who first accepted it. This would be marked with the final trumpet, the town would be left behind. The buses that were evacuating the civilians were a good way for us to get out as well.
The sixth one sounded. This was the second wall, where four angels were released from their binds to the great river Euphrates. This would create the scroll and it would be near. The boy could feel the power of the darkness in many ways. Could it be that the salt had not done the trick after all? Evil laughter started to echo throughout the village and in an instant, it was confirmed. Lucius still had some unfinished business. spirit have any other children? We would find out eventually. But Lucius felt like he was finally in the driver's seat for the throne. Prophecy was still unfulfilled, but the evil was well on its way, as was the boy. Nearby buses were the best way to leave Ludlow behind. Oh, my boy! Such prodigious results! I am thoroughly impressed with you! took the scroll, he felt a warm feeling inside of him, something that might have been lost for a while, but was there again. The sound of the seventh trumpet signaled the third wall. This was the final trumpet sound, and the final wall. The loud voice of an eagle in heaven proclaims the Antichrist as a new ruler forever. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping their puny god. The boy sneaked into a bus that was evacuating the town, and none of the passengers suspected anything. While sitting on the back seat, he looked down at the scroll he held in his hand. It was sealed with seven seals. These seals were not to be opened by hand, but by actions that would lead to them melting away. He had put him through many tests, but now I was sure. Lucius was worthy of his kindness. I would continue to guide him throughout the journey, but let him take his own wicked steps. I was to look after him when he didn't suspect it, and I would be there when he most needed it. The prophecy was not yet over, but just begun. Next, he would have to open the seven seals. I have many sons, and I will have many more, but this one is special. This one continues to surprise me with his crafty ways of delivering my wrath. His creativity is definitely without comparison, and he will be more than ready to take us towards rapture. It will be a thousand years of darkness as I take my place with the mortals. They will learn to take judgment seriously. 
and Lucius will be there with me. My son, the Dark Prince, the little Antichrist. Like a double kill. Mm. 